Welcome back. In this video, we are going to work with files. We will also see how to use one of the modules from the Python standard library, which is the module called CSV, um, that uh, it's useful to manipulate CSV files. Um, think when um, you create, edit, close files, um, usually using the graphical user interface in your computer. Uh, this process is the same that we will follow with Python using the open function. Uh, let's, fir let's first start by manually creating a text file inside our project folder. I am uh, going to... I, I should already have it. Here, yes, sample file. Uh, that's how um, we are going to call it, sample file dot, uh, txt, and each line of the file has one number as a string, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so that's the file that we will use um, for our first sample. So let's see. First, what we want to do is um, learn how to read the file. Okay, uh, so to read the file, we first, uh, we need to open it, uh, read its content, and when we are done with it, we need to close the file. That's what we usually do with the text editor, like, for instance, um, Visual Studio Code. Like, um, I'm opening the file, uh, double click on it, then I edit the test, text, uh, I add the new number, then I save it, and then I close the file. Uh, so let's get started. We can do that in two different ways. Uh, I'll show you first the option one. So option one. It's going to be that I will explain to you in a minute um, what it does. So let's first uh, open the file and then let's loop over each line. Next line. Okay, so uh, in this example we used the open function um, to open the file and we assigned the instance of the file to the file variable, uh, then, so in this line, then we used a for loop uh, to loop over each line of the file using the uh, read lines uh, method on the file instance. And then finally, we printed each line, uh, stripping out uh, from at the end or the beginning of the line, a spaces or new lines using the strip method on a string. So because the line is a string in this case. And then finally, we close the file. So we grab the file instance and we close it using the close uh, method. The option two uh, is, um, it does the same thing. Uh, but using a different approach, and let's see how it works. So, uh, in this example, we will use the um, with keyword that lets us open a new file and close it automatically when we are done with it. Uh, so, uh, first, we need to start the line using a with keyword. So, let me write the code okay uh, so the first thing that we need to do is start the line uh, using the word keyword then we open uh, the file in the same way we did before but this time we use the s keyword to assign the instance of the file to the file variable and then again we use the for loop to iterate over the file lines and then we print each line. As you see in the option two, we are not closing the file. 
uh, because the with uh, keyword, uh, so this format will close the file as soon as we finish with it. So it means that here the file is no longer open, but if we omit this line up here, the file here will still be open. So let's run the code and see what we get. So let's first save this file and run it again. Okay, so we should have the number from one to six twice. And indeed, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then that is the first uh, option. So the um, auto read a file option one. And then down here, we got the second option, uh, which is which outputs the same result. Uh, it's just less lines of code and you need to remember one less thing uh, when you work with files. So um, as you see in this, uh, in this second example, we omitted the uh, close uh, method on the file instance uh, using the with keyword. So because it's uh, useful to close the file automatically after we finish. So let's move forward. Now that we saw how to read the file, we want to write on the file. So so um, if you noticed here in this open function, we passed to the function first the name of the file that we want to open, and then we passed another argument here, which is in this case R, but I could omit that uh, because by default, uh, when you open the file, it's in read mode. So the second option, that the second attribute that we pass here, as you see, is the mode, uh, which is read write, uh, but could be also uh, append or uh, um, T as a text mode. So there are various um, things that you can pass as a second parameter. I will leave a link into the video description uh, for further reference uh, with all the parameters that you can use um, on file. So, um, so in this option, in, in the read um, option, we use the R and it's the default uh, method which is read. If we specify a W instead uh, of reading the file, we can write on the file and its content uh, when we uh, write on it will be overridden. And alternatively, if we want to add contents to a file, we can append uh, to the file using the A. Um, so instead of the R, we will be using the W or the A um, to append to a file. So if um, the file that we pass here does not exist, uh, here we will get an error, uh, but when we write on the file, the file will be created. So I prefer to use, it, to use the second syntax uh, when, uh, so the second option, when we work on, when I work on files, because there is one last thing to remember. And so that's what, what we'll be doing. Uh, so let's see how to write on file. Let's uh, get started by first, uh, let's define a list of numbers like that. So we created a list of numbers uh, these are all the strings and we assign this list to the contents variable. Then we open the file in writing mode this time. So we use with the open function. We specify the name of the file in here. So between the parentheses, first the name of the file, and then we use the W uh, to say that we want to write on file. If you want to read more about the open function, I will leave a link in the description, but you can also read the documentation from your IDE. So that will be uh, 
it. So you can scroll down and read what this open function does in more details. And then uh, now I am going to use the for loop. So next line, <coughs> for loop. <coughs> so we say that for each line in the contents variable, so inside this list, uh, so we place this list inside this content variable. So for each line uh, in the contents could be for, for each element, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we want to uh, do mm, that. And then we use file. We grab the file instance, and you see we have a, a set of methods. We can use the write method and uh, specify the text that we want to pass it. So text. In this case, the text variable contains the line, so the element. Uh, and I'm using the um, the special character uh, to say that I want each element on a new line. Otherwise, they will be all on the same line. Uh, without spaces or anything else. So um, let's see what this code does. Let me open the side panel. So as you see here, we have the sample file and that's it. So let's run, the, let's first save, save our code and run it. So we should have a new sample file that is the one that we created now, and it should contain a list of numbers, so from 1 to 8, all on its own line. Okay, and here we go. So we have all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, we forgot the 5, 6, 7, 8, but that's fine. And that's how you write on a text file, for instance. And then let's see how to write uh, multi-line strings into a file. So we had to place, we had to use this special character to write this on the file, but we can use also another uh, approach. So uh, we can write a, to, to a file a multi-line string, and since it's a multi-line uh, string each line will be placed on a separate line inside our file without having to use the new line special character. So let's first write our uh, let's write uh, a variable and let's store inside this variable, uh, this multi-line string, okay? And now we are going to, um, again, use the same um, code that we wrote here, pretty much, to write on a new file. So we use, again, the with keyword, open function. We specify the name of the file, again, in uh, writing mode, and we apply we attach this instance to the file variable with a s keyword and then we use the file instance um, and then we use the write lines uh, method this time before we wrote the line because we were in a for loop uh, because we looped first inside each element and then we brought each element inside um, this uh, file so the write method write one line instead the right lines writes multiple lines so we simply pass to the uh, right lines method the paragraph um, as a parameter and that's going to write these three lines of text inside our file let's run it and you see we have a new file here and we have its content so each element on a new line and that's how we write on the file a multi-line string. Let's now see how to 
expand to an existing file. Okay, so we used so far the R to read, uh, but we can omit it because the default method is uh, R is read. We use the W for writing, and we can also use the A for appending uh, to a file. So let's create a new string. So again, we are uh, using a new multi-line string. And again, we will use the same syntax that we used before. So we open a new file name. So the same file that we um, created up here, we are opening it again. But this time we are going to append to the file and we save again the instance of the file to the file variable and then we call again the write lines and this time we pass as a parameter this new uh, string for convenience i am going to place this on a new line because otherwise it will uh, keep writing from the end of the last line and that's not what i want uh, so let's run this code you will see that nothing happen in here but if we open we have three more lines with the um, new string that we passed here so uh, this example adds to the end of the file uh, the content uh, that is stored inside the new paragraph variable without overriding the original content of the file if we use the w instead and we pass an, um, a different string and we run this code you will see that now our file contains just the last um, string that we passed okay so we have erased all the content that was in the file and replaced with this new uh, content so be careful when you use it because you can delete the entire content of an important file if you don't know what you're doing exactly. So in this case, I wanted to append to the file and that's going to be on a new line and that run again. And you see that we have test at the end. And so that's how we um, open and close files and add contents to them or read them. Um, let's move uh, to uh, quickly to another option that we can use and it's how to open a file in binary mode. So to do that, we are going to use the RB um, inside the inside the here as a second parameter of the open function, and that will output the content of the file as a row string. So in as binary uh, in binary mode. And that's what the code looks like. So again, we, o we open and we open again the same file. Inside here, we say that we want to open in a read mode, which is the default. But in this case, we are going to pass a second uh, character in here, which says that we are going to use the binary mode. The default mode is text, which is the one that you saw here. So uh, you, you simply see the content as a text and then again the same content that we used before and then we print the line so um, in this case we use the for loop to loop over the lines of the file so each line of the file so line one line two line three line four and then we output its content using the print line uh, the print function and pass to it the line so let's run this code and we should see the output in here. You see the difference between 
before when we um, printed code so we had simply uh, as a result of these uh, strings now we got b which stands for binary and then we go even uh, as an output the um, quotes that surrounds the string and the um, backslash n which stands for new line and that's uh, how the uh, binary mode looks like and then let's move to the other part of this video which is how to work with csv files uh, csv files are the spreadsheets that you use uh, in google sheets or excel and it's important to know how to read them because it's um, pretty useful and uh, widely used uh, file um, type so let's see uh, first, let me write Okay And uh, so um, the module that we are going to use to open and write on CV file on CSV files is uh, the CSV module and comes from the Python standard library, but first we need to import it and then we can use it uh, so import, that's how we import module from the Python standard library. We don't have to install them because they are part of the library. Uh, and as you see, it is by default by my ID moved to the top of the file. And that's where you should put the import statements when you use external modules. And let's use it. So let me first uh, define a, so I'm going to, I'm defining here a variable lines, which contains a list uh, of lists. So this list contains uh, one list uh, with one, two, three, four elements. So first we have the name, profession, and years and years of experience uh, for two persons so uh, then we use the uh, again the with keyword and then again the open function to open the file this time we are going to write on the file so let me specify that So if the file doesn't exist, so as you see here, there is no employees.csv, so we say open the file in writing mode, the file name is open is employees.csv. We use this second parameter that we want, um, that says that we don't want any new line. And then we assign the instance of the file to the F uh, variable this time, and then we use um csv and the module and then we use the writer method which accepts one parameter by uh, which is mandatory which is the file instance and in this case is df and i'm going to save this into a variable so i can use it later and then now I am going to use another method, which is the method write, write, write rows. This method writes multiple lines inside our CSV file, so multiple rows. And what it needs to work is simply the list of lines, so the lists that we created before. And I'm going to pass this list lines okay so when i run this code what do you think is going to happen and here we go we have a new csv file that the program generated for us when we click on it we have two lines and on each each line each element of the line is severed by a comma 
and that's pretty much how uh, most CSV file um, separate their elements, so their <coughs> uh, their columns, and we can, if we want, we can um, pass a different um, a different character for the delimitation of the um, file as you see here inside the writer we can pass the dialect and we can pass all the parameters and uh, you can read more inside the documentation that I will leave a link in the description so let's see how to read the TSP file And um, again, we have also here um, actually two options. Uh, the first one, so the first option is, so again, we use the open function. Uh, this time we say that we want to open the file in read mode, and new line again um, to an empty string, because otherwise we will see uh, the first element on the first line and the second element on third line and an empty line in the middle and let's say that now we want to uh, loop over the lines of the CSP file so we use a for loop uh, the line that we are going to call it L and then we use file read lines read each line and then we can print the content of the file but i'm now using uh, the csv module as you see here is the same approach that we used before and that's going to work anyway so you got the list uh, in this way uh, But that's not what we want, so that's one way. But uh, so that gives you a list of what's inside of the file. If you use the split method, and you can specify separator, and you have each element on a new line like that, or before it was like that. Now is it different? Well, yes, uh, because before it was a list, each element of the each, each element was separated by a comma, and it's a string. But this time it's a list, and we use the split method like that. I forgot to add the uh, comma as a separator. Uh, but as we are now using the CSV model module this way, so okay, let's use it. So again, we use the open. Uh, so the first bit is always the same, and then we we create a reader. So we use the CSV module. And we use the reader method this time to read on to read the file, and we pass to the reader method the file instance and store everything inside the CSP reader. Now we can um, loop over uh, what's inside the CSP reader, which is going to be a list. And say we want to loop over each row uh, of the CSP file. So for row in CSP reader, we want to print and let's do that we use the join and then row and then we print it and you see we will we will see this result so that's the output that we are going to get so each element is uh, joined uh, with a comma if we don't want that we could simply in the row 
and we are going to get the same result that we had before which element is an element of the list then let's uh, use another uh, approach which is um, how to use the dic writer and reader so we are talking about dictionaries this time uh, so how to use the dic okay these are two methods of the csv module uh, so this the csv module has two methods that helps us to work with csv files and dictionaries the dic writer writes element of a dictionary into the into a csv file and places the keys as the table header um, while the dic reader reads the content of a csv back into a dictionary Let's first define a dictionary. Okay. So we have three elements inside our dictionary. Each element has one, two, three, one, two, three, four, has four elements. And so we define a list of dictionaries, and then now we use again, as always, the with uh, open the name of the file in writing mode, new line uh, to an empty string, and then um, so what I'm going to do, as you see, we are using the W, so I'm going to write on a csv file using this content and first i want to uh, grab all the uh, keys okay so i want each element each key inside the list I could do that, but I believe I could also do and uh, no, it's a list. I could do that, possibly. Let's print the result. If you want, you might be able to use that. Um, it's a list. Dict keys, no, it's not a list, but could it be a list? Yeah, so we could do that instead of writing the um, elements of the list manually. So we can say fields, and that are our fields, and then we uh, um, use the csv module and this time i'm going to use the dict writer and the dict writer wants uh, as mandatory file mandatory parameters the file instance so in this case it's f yeah and then he wants the file names which are those that we just instructed so file names and then we say fields okay and that's uh, because we want to generate the header so the first uh, row the first row of our file will have a name job title age and year of experience uh, at the top and then each element uh, follows 
the rows underneath. So let's now save this to a brighter and then let's use it. Uh, we want to uh, write first the header and uh, we use the write header method then we want to write each row so and uh, we use the write row so we want to write um, all the rows at the same time uh, so we don't use any loop in this case and we want to write the, the list so we pass the list of dictionaries as a parameter of the right rows and that will write all the rows inside this employees.csv file. So before the file was that, okay, you see it? And let's run this code now and look at it again. So you see now we have first line of the file is the header, the name, job title, age, and year experience, and then we have the lines underneath it uh, with the actual values. And now, where I was? Uh, yeah, now let's see how we can read it back to a dictionary. So again, same approach so far, we use the with open function and this time I'm not going to specify the second uh, parameter because it's uh, the default, so I want to open the file in read mode. Uh, now I'm going to loop over the file, the lines of the CSV file, so for row in CSV module I want to grab the dict reader and the dict reader wants the file instance so i will say file and then we can print the row and we should look at the terminal now and see our output so this is the content that we will get and that's the output that we get to name fabio job title developer so all in its own line and it says it is an ordered dictionary and that's how you write this this back in uh, as a dictionary and that that's pretty much it for this video in the next episode we will talk about testing in python and i'll see you there if you enjoyed these videos leave a comment and the thumb up and don't forget that you can subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button and activate the notification by clicking the bell icon so you get an alert when my next video is online i will leave a link to the description inside the description of all uh, the documentation uh, for the topics that we covered in this lesson see you in the next video Take care. Bye.